HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Water and Sewer Manager Eric Carty and owner of Weston Nurseries Peter Mezzet will tell you a unique way you can conserve water. We have footage from the annual Little League Parade to kick off the season. Henry Schmidt of the Hopkinton Garden Club talks about winning the Boston Flower and Garden Show. And we have Hiller's softball highlights as they took over first place in the TVL with a win against previously undefeated Norton. But first, the Parks and Recreation Commission unexpired term to 2017 is one of two contested races in this year's town election on the live annual Know Your Vote broadcast on HCAM presented by the Hopkinton Women's Club. The two candidates, Laura Hansen and Bob McGuire, talked about why they want to join the Parks and Recreation Commission. I'm running for Parks and Rec because I have been highly involved in the, co uh, the community. Uh, I've lived here for 16 years and I think it's a great community uh, that supports its residents and offers high quality programs for uh, both young and old. I think that uh, I would like to be involved uh, with both the public and to make sure that there is transparency and that we respond to uh, what the uh, growing needs of the residents in Hopkinton are. We're a growing town and there's uh, lots of kids and a high demand for high quality programs in the Parks and Rec and there's also uh, a lot of other um, Parks and Rec's issues that um, you know encompass the town and uh, are very important to the vision of our town as a cohesive community and one that operates um, really well and is responsive to its uh, uh, inhabitants. Um, I'm looking for uh, input from the public and um, I want what's best for our kids. I've been involved with scouts and lots of parks and rec programs for many years. I believe in good volunteer uh, opportunities in town and I look forward to uh, working to better the community in um, any way I can. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Bob McGuire. I'm running for the commissioner's uh, seat in parks and rec little history or background on, on myself. My wife Valerie and I have lived in town now for, since 2000. We're raising four children, uh, all four are now teenagers, which is, which is challenging. And my first uh, basically introduction to Parks and Rec was at an early age when they've participated in youth soccer, lacrosse, uh, basketball, baseball. Uh, along the way, I assisted where I could with respect to coaching. I was an assistant coach in the Little League. I was a, uh, an assistant coach in the youth soccer at one point. I uh, did a bunch of coaching in the rec basketball. I uh, graduated to become a head coach in rec basketball and, uh, and most recently uh, was an assistant coach uh, on one of the travel basketball teams. Uh, I also have served in town and volunteered on other uh, committees uh, zoning advisory, Zach, as it's commonly known as. I think I served about three or four years on Zach, uh, Hopkinton 2020, which is a visionary economic group. I've served in that for a couple of years, and I'm still a member of the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce and served as president for, for a two year term. Um, when, uh, as you probably know, I was appointed back in November, so I've been on the Parks and Rec for about six months now, and uh, the first order of business was to hire a director. We've had, unfortunately, some turmoil there, but uh, we've been able to secure that with Jay Gulfy, which has really um, solidified the uh, Parks and Rec uh, program. He's got a great staff with Colleen Allen and, um, and, uh, and Kevin Nathan. 
Um, uh, some of the uh, I saw Jay today actually, and what what our goal is to, to uh, find find other programs such as uh, there might be a new wrestling program as well as flag football. Uh, I if I have one motto, I'd like to see to improve our fields and to also find more fields for the kids to play on. Thank you. You can see Know Your Vote and all school committee candidate interviews on our website, hcam.tv. The town election this year takes place on Monday, May 18th. The Water and Sewer Department is working with local businesses to help encourage water conservation. Water and Sewer Manager Eric Hardy and owner of Weston Nurseries, Peter Mezit, talked about how the purchase of a rain barrel can help reduce water consumption. Uh, this year, uh, the Hopkins Water Department is trying to take a proactive stance in working with all of our local establishments, uh, including Weston Nurseries, uh, the Angels Garden, and Evergreen Garden. And in the past, uh, we're unfortunately mandated by the state to put on water use restrictions every year. And in the past, I think people might have been reluctant in order to buy new plantings if we have uh, those bans in place because we're afraid they can't water them. But we're trying to be out there uh, and help promote with these garden centers the, the proper use of how you can still buy your plantings, how you can water them properly, and actually help save water in the process. So I've met with all of the owners and they've all agreed to help out. And if anyone has uh, anything that they need to discuss or have questions, uh, along with our local garden club as well, they'd be happy to, and more than happy to discuss with you what the different options are that are available out there to help the public in order to do their plantings and in order to do them more efficiently. So this year we're trying to you know, be on the good side of things and help promote the, uh, the efficient use of where in the past has kind of been, there's been water bans and people think uh, we can't do that because of it. So we're, we're making a partnership out there and, and trying to be proactive and uh, we really appreciate the help of all the uh, garden centers and nurseries that we have here in town. Well these rain barrels are made in Hyde Park by the uh, Hyde Park Boston by the Great American Rain Barrel Company and they come in different colors. We have grays, browns, and greens here. Uh, they're recycled olive jars, uh, olive oil jars, I believe. So it's a good recycled product made from a local company. They um, basically, you have this contraption here that attaches to the downspout of the gutter, and you can just have the water go right out the usual downspout, or you can open this up so that diverts the water into the rain barrel. So that's how it works. And then there's spigots top and bottom, so you can um, fill up a watering can, I think halfway up rather, so fill up a watering can, and on the bottom, so the pressure goes right out your hose and you can water through a hose. They work great. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we just wanted to you know, thank Peter and Weston Nurseries uh, for partnering with us this year. Well, we've always done a rain barrel program in the past, and we thought it would be nice to do it locally and in-house with businesses now that we found out that uh, they carry them down here. Uh, so I think it'll be a great thing for the residents. It you know, helps conserve water, um, which is always important to do. And having it local with uh, local businesses and local people, I think, is just a win-win for the, you know, the town and, and the businesses. So we really appreciate you yeah, helping us out. appreciate you working with us, too. It's a great thing for the town to work with the local businesses. Yeah. So thank you, Eric. And thank you. And the, uh, the residents will be able to get a, a discount? They are, yes. The residents will get 15% uh, off if they bring in proof of residency, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> which is great, great for them, it helps them out save as well. And yeah. uh, so it really is a, just a win-win for everybody. So we, we yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Okay, thanks again, Eric. The Hopkinton Garden Club recently had a first place finish at the Boston Flower and Garden Show. Weston Nurseries employee and member of the Hopkinton Garden Club, Henry Schmidt, talked about the prestigious award. We were very fortunate. We did one of the tables, which was supposed to uh, represent uh, a buffet for six, uh, and it was of the birth of a child, and we picked Peter Rabbit. So uh, we work as a group. There's about five people in the garden club that work, and the garden club always gets along good together, which is the fact of doing it. And when you do do it, you always shoot for first prize, but you don't always get it. So uh, you have to just go with the flow and hope you do. And this year, we did get first prize, plus we did the top award in our group uh, for that showing that went out. And it's uh, quite a prestigious award, so it, the group must have felt pretty good about uh, winning it. It was. It was terrific. And what was nice about it is that the club works as a group. 
and they support each other, and that is uh, what's so nice about it. Um, we try and have several committee meetings first, and when it comes time to set it up, it's only a uh, group of three that has to go in about uh, six in the morning uh, to set it up and get it ready for judging. Um, and if you go in with the idea that you'd like to win first, but you don't always win first, you do it as a learning experience and an experience, just go in and have a great time. And then everything works out fine. All right now, uh, tell us about the contest. Uh how many entries did each club get to put in and, and that type of thing? What was the general rules for the contest? Uh, there's five, I mean, it's five, four tables to a group. It's done the first and the second uh, placing. We were in the second. Um, and there, so there is four different clubs at a time that does this. And uh, we all pick our theme uh, to do and then it's approved and you go from there. And we were nervous because we, I think we were the only club that picked a fictional uh, rabbit as our um, table. Uh, and then you go. The uh, Federation has guidelines that you have to keep within. And as long as you do that, you are fine. And because um, on the judging, uh, we got over 95 points, that's when we got the bigger award attached to it. And. Uh what encouraged the Peter Rabbit theme? Was that just a general group consensus, or was there something that encouraged that? Uh, it was a group consensus. We get together uh, at the beginning, which is early in the fall, so there's a lot of planning with this. And we threw names out uh, at that meeting of five. Um, we just toss them out and then choose one. And then you try from there thinking, well, we need the plates, we need everything to go with this. So you base it around that uh, to do. All right, now is there any other garden shows coming up for the uh, Hopkinton Gardening Club? I believe we're going to do Art and Bloom uh, at the Art Gallery in Hopkinton again this year. And then, of course, there is the uh, home tour that's coming up in June where they're touring these uh, historic houses and gardens uh, that the Garden Club is involved with. Uh, we will be putting arrangements in these different houses uh, that are open to the public and then the uh, gardens of course are going to be open. We'll be quite involved with that helping them to get ready and then staffing it uh, to make sure that people understand the gardens and what they're all about. We are going to take a short time out on HCAM News. Coming up next, we will take a look at the annual Little League Parade to kick off the season. Hiller's softball took over first place in the TVL. And Courtney will have our HCAM Insider. A lot more on the way. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello, I am Marie Smith, and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition, and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free, and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you.
Welcome back to HCAM News. Little League season has started and recently fans and family members gathered as the Little Leaguers marched through downtown Hopkinton for the annual kickoff parade. Kira Perry and Emily Segroy. Uh, missing today are Juliana Cedia and Lily Rooney. Congrats, girls. Jeffrey Toko. Two of the boys that aren't here today recognize also Aiden Kelly and Owen Flanagan. And I can have the rest of the group just step forward a bit. The coaching staff and my two bat boys, Chris Toko. Todd Pavon, Ben Paharic, Charlie Papura, and Matt Gaughan doing a great job as bad boys. Thank you, everyone. So, so George kind of uh, spoke a little bit about it. Um, Williamsport is the kind of pinnacle for the 12-year-old group, and they play um, kind of at a regional level. Um, in the last 53 years, Hoppington has won it exactly once. Um, so it's quite an accomplishment when you look at what this team has done and what Larry and his, and his staff have done uh, to, to really kind of bring back to Hopkinton the championship. We do it with a lot of class, a lot of pride, uh, and they represented Hopkinton well. And I think one of the things from my perspective is the ability to represent is very important uh, because it reflects on the town. And you know, him and his staff, uh, Roger Breslin um, and Dave Rancatori did a great job um, managing this all the way through. So I'm going to turn over and recognize Larry for the effort that he did. Introduce these guys, these boys over here. Unfortunately, not everyone is here, but uh, nine out of the twelve, and they're not just talented baseball players that that have had a lot of success, but they're just really, really good kids. And it was a privilege to kind of coach them and be around them. And, and I think that part is what I'll I'll miss the most because they're just just really good good kids that uh, put aside their egos, accepted their roles and did whatever they had to do to, uh, to, to, to win on the field, and, and, and that's special. Okay. First off, Drew Rankatori. DJ Spank. Matt Epstein. Sean Farrell. Jack Breslin. Of course on the uh, pitching mound. Tommy Ambersoni. Ian Ken. Will Quinlan. Chris Canal. Andrew Saparocious. And I want to recognize Robbie Bernardin, Ned Dean, and Jack Whaley, all who aren't here today with other commitments. Great job, boys. Well done. Well done, everybody. Be sure to check out our YouTube page or website to find our full footage of the Little League Parade. After an early loss to Milford, Hiller's softball is rolling through the TVL and recently they took over first place with a big win over previously undefeated Norton. On Monday, May 4th, the 8-1 Hiller's softball team took on the 8-0 Norton Lancers. League leader in ERA freshman Kelly Nelson was on the hill for Norton. And for Hopkinton, it was 3-0 Juliet Hume, who did not give a run up all season long heading into this one. For Juliet Hume and the Hillers defense, it was a strike-o-fest. Delivers a strike. 
And one down. Quite impressive numbers for the senior. Hume delivers. And that is a beauty of a pitch for strike three. Two up, two down. One is shining. There's a swigging strike. Three up, three struck out. And the Hopkinton Hillers coming up on the bottom of the first. Bottom of the first, this happened. Nelson to the set. Hit in the air to right center towards the fence. That's gone. A two run home run. Kayla Sullivan's fourth homer of the season. It's two to nothing, Hillers. Two nothing, Hillers heading to the top of the second. Wide right up in the pitch. And there is strike three. Four strikeouts. Swinging strike. And that is the fifth strikeout. Wide up and the pitch. Swinging strike. Top half of the third inning, the Norton Lancers. Coming back up to the plate, trying to make up for a two to nothing Hillers lead. Hume to the set. Strike three. Senior set to deliver. There's a swinging strike, and that is another K. A couple years to come. As there's another strike. Striking out the side for the third time in a row is Juliet Hume. Hume to the set. Swinging strike. Awfully close as Hume set to deliver. There's strike three. That is number 11. Hume deals. There is strike three, got away from the catcher. The throw to first, not in time. Hume to the set. Swinging strike. And how about that? Technically, Juliet Hume struck out 13 hitters in four innings. Swinging strike. And there is a strike. It does get by the catcher and the runner. Going to give her the base, it looks like. Swinging strike. And that will be the third out of the top of the fifth. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Two to nothing, Hillers. It's reached on an error and struck out so far. On the ground, gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first. That will be in time, but a run does score. Molly Bennett comes around to make it three to nothing, Hillers. Three to nothing, Hillers. We head to the top half of the sixth. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike, and that'll do it for the inning. A little jam for Juliet Hume, but she gets out of it. And still, Norton is scoreless. It's three to nothing, Hopkinton heading to the bottom of the sixth. Line up and the pitch, and this is hit into center field. That drops down, one run into score. Second run being waved around, and Hannah Ingstrom will reach second. Line up and the pitch, and this is hit in the air towards left field. That'll drop in for a hit. And Ingstrom waved around, will score the sixth. Hiller's run. There it is, strike three, and that will do it. Juliet Hume gets her 18th strikeout, 16th strikeout, four and out. And the Hopkinton Hillers knock off the Norton Lancers six to nothing. Quite an amazing performance by Juliet Hume as she takes down the top team in the TVL. The Hiller is now in first place as they beat Norton six to nothing. Hume had 18 Ks. Kayla Sullivan went one for two at the plate including a two-run home run in the first. It was her fourth home run of the year, and the Hillers get the victory over formerly top-seeded Norton. Be sure to catch more Juliet Hume strikeouts and Hillers softball coverage airing right here on HCAM. For more information about the wide array of programs coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On a new Hopkinton coffee break on Friday, May 15th at 8 p.m., the ladies sit down with Sarah Ann Jordan to hear about her life as a Hopkinton firefighter. 
When I was little, my yeah. uncle was on the department. I always kind of like, like interested me. And then, uh, like high school, I started hanging out at the fire department. I was like, yeah, this is, really? this is where I want to be. On Saturday, May 16th at 3 p.m., the Lady Hillers are at it again on softball versus Norton. Then at 4.35, it's softball versus Bellingham. Then we have one more game with softball versus Millis at 6.15 p.m. On Monday, May 18th at 7 p.m., Sandy Hammond shares music and stories of her activism in the transgender community on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. So I saw a need for a trans-only vocal space. And for a lot of reasons, safety, uh, emotional safety, musical safety, and a space to figure it out. At 9.30 p.m., Danielle Legros george shares tales of growing up in Boston and how poetry can shine the light for people on poetic lines. We reach out to poetry in moments of great sorrow, or great joy for weddings, for celebrations. And so there is poetry all around us. On Tuesday, May 19th at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. Then on Thursday, May 21st at 6.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee meeting will also air live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, May 24th at 10 a.m., the Planning Board meeting from May 20th will air. Do you want to be on the HCAM Insider mailing list? If so, send an email to me at Courtney at HCAM.TV. If you do receive it, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, HCAM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including town election happenings and upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.